Hello, everybody. All right. Welcome to Up Close and Personal, Catapult's new series that we have started with today. I must say a lot of, uh, you know, plans and executions went behind this. But kudos to the team that we were, we are, you know, finally live and it's day that we're starting with another series. Of course, um, y'all have already read and uh, so many posts uh, that we've had about up close and personal. So let me quickly tell you about what the series is, right? So up close and personal is going to be um, a series of uh, chat sessions with a variety of artists, right? From various backgrounds. And we're gonna let you come close and come uh, get aware and explore so many different artists from a variety of background with their art on this very series. So we are really excited and we are hoping that we're gonna go a long, long way uh, with up close and personal. And uh, today being the very first episode and you all already are aware that we have a very special guest with us today. He is Harsh Narayan. Uh, you know, there is so much to talk about uh, him and there is so much to talk to him. So I'm already excited to get him on screen. But uh, before that, let me tell you, uh, let, me, let me build that excitement up for you. So he is, of course, not just a Sarangi player that you know about. He also comes from the, the legendary family who's, you know, his grandfather was the one who was actually behind getting Sarangi as the as the, you know, on, in the center stage as a forefront. So you can imagine that is date, dating back to so long. And uh, I can't even, uh, I can't even, you know, wait to have so many more stories uh, that will be coming up. And currently, Harsh being the generation now, he's taking uh, our Indian classical music, our Indian classical instruments, uh, to heights and to, you know, uh, making his mark internationally. So there is a lot of things. And especially if you are one of those who loves classical music, then I think today's episode is going to be a ball game for you, right? And even if you aren't, I think you are going to thoroughly enjoy something so niche and different. So uh, before I get Harsh uh, online, as in on screen with us, uh, let me start the show with some music, right? Some sarangi, so that you are prepped up for what is going to come up. Just hold on. Oh, oh, oh. 
All right. How is it? And Harsh is here finally. Hi Harsh, yeah. it was Hi, so Ria. amazing. Oh, so amazing to see you play that effortlessly. And I'm sure our audience are going to agree whoever is here watching us. Um such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you Ria. Thank you for your kind words and I would like to thank you and uh, Catapult Network uh for inviting me over to uh, your talk show and uh, speaking with uh, everyone and uh, the audience so thank you very much for having me here no harsh i think it's a pleasure to see you meet you here and it's it's i am glad i got the opportunity to you know have a word with you here uh now you know going ahead um i'll tell you what's my understanding of sarangi uh i believe uh, it's one of those uh, uh instruments that is very very comparatively closer to the vocals right and i think people yeah they demand uh, so whatever nitty gritties cannot be completed by the vocalist <laughs> is kind of uh, you know expected from the instrument itself um if i'm not wrong yeah yes sounds... well basically uh, the the music from sarangi comes from vocal music and uh, uh, you know before i jump into that i would uh, i'm sure we have many uh, uh, you know amongst our audience who already know about the sarangi know its history but for the benefit of people who are probably hearing yes. and seeing this instrument for the first time it's one of the oldest and the most traditional instruments of india uh, the name sarangi comes from the hindi word saw rangi which means 100 colors saw 100 rang means colors so it's an instrument of 100 musical colors and that's how its name is derived and uh, like yeah. how you rightly pointed out uh, you know it has uh, uh, you, you know the sound of the instrument is very close to uh, that of a voice and uh, you know that's yeah. why it's uh, you know used as an accompanying instrument for uh, you know most of the vocalists and uh, yeah. and uh, uh, you know that that's a brief background about the instrument right and uh, so you know exactly i was coming to it and uh, before that you self explained but uh, you know there is one thing i w- want to know from you so for you i'm sure your you know sarangi is your thing um so you know what is that uh, uh, sort of an understanding that you would want to give about sarangi like basically your perspective you know like each one has a thing uh, when it comes to their uh, their instrument or their work or you know so something like yeah. that for sarangi with well as uh, as you saw uh, you know like the little video that i played it has a beautiful sound it's a beautiful instrument and uh, yeah. uh, you know it it uh, of course it deserves uh, you know much more respect and recognition amongst the mass audience yeah. as well uh, you know and uh, you know it's uh, unfortunately sarangi has always uh, had a secondary role in uh, classical hindustani music you know it always remained in the background when i say secondary role it's always accompanying a vocalist uh, and uh, uh, you know it's always remained in the background and uh, it is due to uh, you know uh, substantial efforts that my grandfather pandit ramnarayan ji uh, who is also my guru who took he bought this instrument in the forefront of uh, he bought it on the main stage you know uh, yep. uh you know and i am uh, i would like to say i'm a big uh, admirer of uh, ustad bindu khan sahab who uh, you know who has uh, contributed tremendously to this instrument uh, and uh, uh, you know he saw he is the one who saw the instrument very differently but you know it was my grandfather who took it around the world you know he uh, uh, in and in the year 1950 he recorded with the hmv 3 uh, minute record with long playing records and that will be broadcast in uh, all radio stations all over the country and that in the 50s radio was like a big me that was like probably the only medium that you know you could reach out to the masses yeah. people started hearing sarangi in a very different way you know uh, it's because of the unique approach he has towards his music and the instrument itself then in the year 1951 he recorded uh, you know one of india's first long playing records with this company king solomon mines and that was released mm-hmm. a couple of years later in which he played rags komal rishabha savri and days and uh, that was india's 
one of the first LP records that was ever released after independence. Wow. And, uh, you know, wow. thereafter, he, he traveled abroad from the late 50s, early 60s, uh, you know, all over Europe, America, uh, you know, and, and that's how Sarangi started becoming really popular in the Western countries. And, uh, you know, right. there he made, uh, he met other great uh, musicians, board instrument uh, musicians like Sir Yehudi Menuhin, Ross Rupovich, uh, you know, Isaac Stern. And, uh, you know, they would inspire each other. And, uh, uh, you know, and my grandfather then was performing in all the top uh, classical music festivals in Europe and America. You can name it, the Vienna Festival, the, the Bath Menuhin Festival, uh, the Berlin Music wow. Festival, <laughs> Shiraz Festival, Woodstock Festival, you name it. And he was performing there repeatedly numerous times. And that, you know, changed the face of Sarangi. It, it uh, started, uh, you know, people started considering it as a solo classical instrument due to these tremendous right. efforts that he has taken. So uh, right. Right. that was oh in brief God. about like, the you know... Sarangi and the journey. <laughs> that it has gone that through. you are yeah exactly so, so you know harsh like uh, again like whatever you're talking about is uh, you know not very common uh, because if like you know most of us who are here probably would have families where we know okay our parents are working and uh, music is more like a hobby so you know that is a different way of growing up so because we are speaking about family i am really interested in understanding how is it for you because uh, you only saw people doing music and you know while going Lovely. to school there were different people in school with the different backgrounds so how was that thing you know i've always been inquisitive to understand how it is with being in a music family <laughs> right i mean uh, it was because that's all I saw my my grandfather, my father Pandit Bridge Narayan, who's uh, who's a Sarod maestro, and yes. uh, one of the finest musicians of our country. Uh, also my guru, uh, you know. I, I would see my grandfather, my aunt uh, Aruna Narayan Kalle, who resides Aruna in Toronto. Yes. She's one of the finest Sarangi players today, and you know, the three of them have been such a musical uh, inspiration to me, uh, and. You know, I would see them and, you know, I, of course, I'm, I've grown up believing that, okay, fine, this is what I need to do. I would, I would listen to my friends talk that, you know, their father, they're going to the office and doing this and that. But I would <laughs> see my grandfather, my, my father, my aunt, you know, being involved with music and I grew up believing that uh, this is what I need to do. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, I, it's, to say the least, I, you know, uh, to have gurus like my grandfather, Pandit Ram Narayanji, my father, Pandit Bridh Narayanji, my aunt, Aruna Narayan Kalle, is, is such a blessing. I mean, if I say it's a blessing, it's such an understatement, you know. Uh, yeah, I can totally feel it. Like, uh, for somebody who's not in a musical family and, you know, then, but then, uh, you know, like I, like I said, I want to understand how were your, how was your childhood? Like, were you, be, were you like given, uh, you know, strict warnings about uh, doing your riyas or was it more like, no, no, do your homework first and then the riyas? How, how were those things? <laughs> were you like well, beaten? Uh... <laughs> no, never, never. Actually, you know, music in our family, you'll be surprised to know that it's never forced on to uh, anybody. Like my grandfather, my father, they never forced me that, uh, you know, hey, you need to do this. And this is what you need to do. It's like even, uh, you know, if you want to pick it up, start learning, you're free to do so. I, uh, uh, you know, uh, my grandfather and my father, they have taught me with a lot of love. Of course, you get cold advice <laughs> while learning. <laughs> but uh, they have you know, in a way, they have been very lenient with me. But, uh, uh, and, and, you know, this was never forced on to me. But uh, at right. the same time, you know, they were very particular that I complete my education. So, you know, I, I uh, am a Bachelor of Commerce. I did my MBA in Marketing and Finance. Uh, you know, I worked with the corporate for, uh, you know, over a decade. Yes. And so I did all that while I was learning and performing. Uh, but uh, yes, to answer your question, I was never forced into music. I, it was never that, uh, you know, my father, my grandfather they never took me and put me, made me sit to do this practice. <laughs> uh, so, so harsh, but wasn't it uh, like you mentioned, right, about the corporate job and all, wasn't it different? Because, you know, usually it is different because uh, you don't see that while you grow up. So you are like, no, nobody's going to office in my house. I mean, what am I doing? <laughs> Was it also that sort of a thing? 
it had it was difficult of course but i did enjoy that journey as well and uh, you know i uh, i i believe i've been very fortunate because even in the corporate uh, world uh, i have had good leaders i have had good seniors who have supported me uh, not only mm-hmm. in my corporate career but also as a musician uh, most of them have supported me and uh, you know uh, I, i'm just i'm just very fortunate to have uh, that experience as well and uh, you know it it made me uh, uh, you know i think i i believe a much better rounded uh, thinker uh, uh, that experience but yeah. uh, nevertheless it's been close to 2 years that now i am a full time musician many people ask me that guys i'm wow. a full time musician now <laughs> <laughs> wow that's such a nice thing to hear but you know harsh i agree with this thing because a lot of times it is really especially in today's generation that the way things are happening uh, with yep. various industries it's very important i feel to have an exposure because nobody is any more just a musician i mean you market yourself you you know you you promote yourself you do everything on your own so i think uh, okay. i think that's been a additionally that's somehow a blessing in disguise that you you know got to do uh, the other part as well absolutely i i will uh, you know i will always respect and cherish the experience that i've had from the public right also we have one of our uh, audience who's uh, you know who's uh, asking about where can we get these records so i guess the all the old uh, selfies and everything that you mentioned is there a place where everybody who's listening to us and watching us can you know access sure. yeah i mean most of them i believe would be available on streaming site like you know your itunes or you know we have wink here uh, and you know they could probably just check it out and uh, uh, you know although we have those records in our archive if anyone wishes to have a copy they could just reach out to me inbox me and i'd be happy to help great that's fantastic so everybody please follow him there on the social media and you know always direct message him and he will you know he'll be there all right uh, uh harsh then uh, oh, you know of course uh, your father has been into sarod and of course sarangi is was all, already there and but why would you choose sarangi i mean you you obviously had so many options so it, was that naturally or yes it pretty much came to me naturally so you know as a kid uh, so i started learning sarangi when i was 6 years old you know and uh, mm-hmm. as soon as i would be back home from the school at about 3:30 uh, 3:45 uh, pm uh, 4 o'clock 4 pm was my grandfather's time to practice like sharp at 4 pm even uh, you know most days even today he'd be sitting for his practice and i as soon as i would come back from my school i would freshen up and you know i would be playing around here and there but i would see him dedicated in practice and teach uh, you know at the, and during that time and i ended up seeing him more often because my father was traveling uh, touring uh, you know everywhere so i ended up seeing my grandfather more because he had kind of due to age uh, you know he was taking it a little easy on his performances and traveling right and i would hear the sarangi more as a kid so you know that uh, uh, you know automatically i drew to the sarangi uh, and uh, you know one fine day i just i told uh, my grandfather that i would like to learn this instrument and of course you know he was very he was happy he uh, you know he he prepared like a small instrument from uh, for me and uh, he started teaching me wow. and uh, and that that's how my journey began and i've been so fortunate that i've had uh, a guru also like my father pandit bridge narayan ji who is there at home and you know both of them my aunt aruna narayan kalle they have all yes. uh, uh, you yeah. know uh, <laughs> taught me i can only visualize when you're saying all this <laughs> you know all the three people out there and you you, you have no escape and also you you know it it is such a it is such a different uh, journey i can only imagine um harsh sure, what about you know being a child did you did you also uh, play uh, on the stage and perform uh, with the family members do you have any such memories because you know yeah. i'm saying this because uh, i'm going to show the audience a wonderful video of all the generation uh, you know all together on stage but before yeah. that you know would love to understand any memories anything that you want to talk about of such performances absolutely you know so uh, i started performing at the age of 15 and uh, uh, you know i uh, i have been fortunate uh, that 
you know one of my first concerts were my uh, was the 75th birthday celebrations of my grandfather pandit ram narayan which happened at uh, nehru center in mumbai mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, that was a special concert because the part of that concert was a three generation concert in which uh, you know my grandfather was there my aunt aruna narayan kalle and i was accompanying both of them on stage so although it was nerve wracking but it was <laughs> it has been such a privilege and honor to be on stage with these two masters and uh, you know thereafter i had the opportunity to uh, do a few tours of europe with my grandfather which I, you know which in which i learned tremendously at that that, uh, that very yes, young age, age at the age of wow. 16 17 i i did three tours of wow. europe with my grandfather and uh, you know just being on stage with him although it is like really frightening because he's just such a master in what he does that it's it's impossible to keep up with him uh but of course you know he he's been very kind and you know i learned some very very important lessons on stage which i use till date so uh, uh you know sure. that phase of like performing with him uh uh you know i learned a lot i learned tremendously and uh, you know i'm i'm sure the the video of the three generations uh, together my grandfather pandit ram narayan my aunt aruna narayan and myself uh, i'm sure the audience is going to enjoy it's going to be that. such a treat <laughs> uh, but has it ever happened that uh, you know uh, once you're back from the concert and then you've had your share of <laughs> because uh, you know he being so perfect and if at all anything going wrong did you did you all ever have such conversations as well <laughs> yes we had but you know it was it was never a harsh conversation i must uh, say that even with my father it's like you know mm-hmm. if i have uh, done something in a concert which i shouldn't be doing they would come back and make we would be sitting on the dinner table or the lunch table or whatever meal we are having they would sit me down and talk me through that what needs to be done and what not needs to be done mm-hmm. you know it was never like a scolding it was like you know you need to be careful about this you need to be careful about that so uh never like how know, we, as, we would hear on the result day ki bola tha padhai kar lo <laughs> no that that never all the that happened with my studies but never with music oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, okay so on that note what i'll do is i'm going to you know showcase uh, the the generation video and probably please, post please. that talk about that very video a, a little more on you know what's exactly happening over there certainly just Yeah, give me a second guys.
one second as I switch this on. Okay, this was such a. I don't. I I think everybody, everyone's gonna agree with me. It was such a. You know, I'm I'm actually. I have no words, and I could see the expressions on everybody on the stage, and it was such an amazing thing to see. Uh, if, if I'm not wrong, Harsh, and this is also to let everybody know, uh, whatever was happening on the stage, like each one of them were playing their own thing. It was on spot, right? It was not something which was prepared, right? No, it was not something that was prepared. Uh, you know, it was on the spot. And then, like my grandfather is such a genius that you know, at the moment he'll come up with such things that uh, you know yes. that are just so extremely difficult. And can you imagine I'm like a 16 year old kid there on the stage with one of the greatest musicians. Yeah, just smiling and you're like. <laughs> and my aunt, you know, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what more could I do? So, but it was, yeah. you, know, you know, but, you know, this video is such a good example of, uh, of what we call as Taleem, of training. You know, yes. uh, and, and uh, you, you know, this is a perfect example that my grandfather trained my aunt Aruna Narayan Kande. He's also trained me. And that, you know, that five minute video gives you a sense of what Talim is. And, uh, you know, I, I'm glad, uh, you know, you shared this with the audience today. No, and I, I, I'm, I'm sure like the comments themselves are uh, speaking that it was such a masterpiece, if I can call it. And uh, for everybody, this is what I wanted to let them know that, you know, when it comes to classical music, I think uh, it's a lot of things are on spot, like, and it's all, there's a lot that jugal bandi that was happening. It was, you know, you're just put on spot, ki chalo, it's your turn, show me what you can do. And I think, yes, like you rightly said, that is talim. That is something, some preparedness that you come up with. Um, uh, on this, you know, on, on this very, um, uh, I have, so I also had a similar question. And we have uh, somebody, um, uh, I have uh, Mr. Partho, who apparently, uh, if I can say, who, who's worked with you in, in your corporate, uh, you know. Absolutely. Uh, Yes. So he has a question for you. And that's pretty much was my question too. Uh, you know, he says that how do we popularize such uh, beautiful instruments in, you know, among the younger generation? And right. uh, yeah, so what's what's your take on that? Right. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I really, uh, I must say before I answer that question, I really enjoyed working <laughs> with Mr. Pasasati Karga. And very fondly, I still call him boss. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> sweet. but to answer answer that question uh, you know what has been uh, you know the the kind of perception that the sarangi has always had for centuries uh, you mm -hmm. know that's very disheartening and that sort of continues till date you know if you ask uh, if i say to someone that i'm learning the sarangi the first thing is oh my god how can you learn the sarangi it is such a difficult instrument and the next yes. thing is, uh, you know, what makes it difficult is, oh, it is very painful on your, uh, you know, for your fingers. And then I say that, you know, which, I mean, really tell me which instrument is not painful and which instrument is really easy to say. And here's for the Absolutely. audience, you know, I mean, my, I've been playing, sorry, but look at my fingers, there's no marks, there's nothing, which is, I don't think that's <laughs> such a painful thing uh, if you really look at my fingers here. I must say uh, the nails are cut too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, yes. <laughs> uh, I, you know, uh, for, for playing the sarangi, that's another prerequisite. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, so that has been, unfortunately, uh, you know, the perception of sarangi, which has been going on for centuries. And, uh, uh, you know, so uh, the number one thing that instrument really needs is, uh, the, you know, the students of the sarangi need, uh, uh, you know, in the sense, they need to be trained in, in a particular way. Like, like yeah. how we just spoke about Talim is to find the right guru to learn your sarangi. You know, uh, and, and that has uh, really not been the case for sarangi for centuries now. So that's the number one thing. And then, of course, you know, uh, to, to uh, showcase the sarangi in its true color, in its, uh, you know, in its full potential uh, by, mm. by playing uh, solo events, by playing, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, across uh, uh, not only our country but also abroad, and uh, you know that's that's one way of uh, getting this instrument right on track, and that's what exactly what my grandfather did. You know, he approached the sarangi in such a different way 
in a different way that has been going on for centuries and you know you listen to him his music just the tone of his sarangi is like marvelous which you know everyone just got a gist of so yes. i think you know uh, to to uh, to answer the question i think that's the most important thing the sarangi needs at the moment and uh, of course most of it is something that you've said but do you also think uh, the the you know that whole impression that the interest is kind of decreasing uh, sp- not just with sarangi or something for on towards this entire indian classical music so do you think among the youth the interest itself is going down with the uh, of course the western was always there but today there is like a platter of uh, we may not even know the name but it's there so Right. Do you think it's the interest issue or what? What is it? No, yeah, not really. I, you know, I do believe. Uh, you know, I have so many young musician uh, friends and colleagues who are doing such a tremendous job. So, uh, you know, I, I don't feel that the interest for classical music is diminished. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, but it has always had a very niche audience. Yeah, uh, you know, it is. It has never been the kind of music that will uh, fill up stadiums. You know, for that matter. I hope right. that time comes someday. but uh, it has never been like pop music like you know popular amongst the mass it has always had a very niche appeal and uh, you know today i'm i'm so happy because i have uh, so many uh, uh, you know musician colleagues and friends who are out there young musicians who are doing so so very well so uh, you know i i don't think that uh, uh, you know uh, Uh, there is uh, you know less audience for classical music it just that it has a very niche appeal maybe probably yes <laughs> yes yeah. all right uh, harsh of course uh, you know you spoke about how you have uh, seen music right in your house but uh, what about your uh, uh, building your uh, you know set of artists that you have uh, really been inspired by has it always been only the family members or have you even explored more and again from a from a variety point of uh, view well i i listen to all my musician uh, friends out there colleagues out there and i enjoy listening to all of them so uh, uh, you know and every you know every time that you listen to someone there is always something to learn there's always something very very inspiring uh, uh but uh, you know but, but however like when i have to do my own work i draw inspiration from all and then try and put it all together but you know of course as a kid as uh, you know growing up uh, uh, you know as a child in this household as a musician uh, you know i have been surrounded with my grandfather my father my aunt who are such fine musicians uh, you know and they are just the greatest inspiration uh, in, you know i have yes yes I, i was just reading the comments and somebody said that <laughs> god willing we will do a live session uh, soon yes i think it it totally <laughs> deserves a live session soon on ground on ground is what he says one day yes totally but harsh like you said that when it comes to your music so now coming towards uh, uh, you know we would love to know what is your taste when it comes to music as in uh, you know there are a variety of things right there is fusion music there is of course uh the instrument being classical but there is always uh, a way an artist plays around with that particular instrument so what would be your taste in that how would you describe that well of course you know a lot of music uh, uh you know i uh, i listen to all kinds of music uh, you know it could be pop jazz rock everything but of course i tremendously being a classical musician i'm more biased towards classical music and that's the most uh, that i listen to Uh, I also enjoy a lot of Bollywood film music uh, that I like to listen to. In fact, you know, my grandfather through the 60s, uh, late 50s, 60s, 70s, he's played a lot in uh, you know background uh, uh, music of for films like the songs. So you know, I I enjoy a lot of uh, you know all kinds of music, but primarily, of course, I uh, you know most of my hearing and playing is classical music. Wow. and uh, you've also been uh, you know doing a lot of uh, the original music right uh, and i think that's how you spent uh, your lockdown because i'm aware of your two albums that you've released over these few months uh, so would you would you you know tell us a little more tell in fact tell everybody who's watching us uh, about the two no. new releases 
so uh, you know my first release was back in 2016 actually that was with the times music uh, in which i presented to raj surya danashri and uh, pratdeep but my latest release uh, happened in the us uh, you know right during the lockdown it was released in the month of april i believe uh, and the album's name is called dhanurvadya in which i presented three raags which is gujri todi madhuvanti and shri so uh, guys it's available on on youtube on you can listen to it on wink here in india and uh, you know i i actually have a few cds with me physical copies so anyone would <laughs> like to get their copy uh, you know they could reach out to me so uh, but i i tremendously I, I... enjoyed doing this album uh, it was uh, i i recorded this in boulder colorado and uh, it was like up in the mountains uh, with a beautiful uh, studio Uh, you know, overlooking the mountains, and uh, you know, I really had a very nice time recording the CD. Wow, wow! And yes, uh, by the way, everybody, you know, Harsh has a very elite uh, choice of uh, or feel of videos, and you know, I think that's that's because I'm going to show you guys one, and it's it's uh, marvelous. A lot of uh, people who are already following Harsh may have seen it, but I'm going to show that to you in a while. But before that, I also want to quickly touch upon. you know your international work because you just mentioned that uh, your recent one was with a col- from a us uh, record label and you know so how is uh, the kind of work happening internationally when it comes to of course let's minus the lockdown phase um, yeah. but things are getting better and free so how would you is it is it is uh, is indian classical music more popularized internationally <laughs> like the irony but <laughs> you know i mean uh, you know you know the, the international audience is very different is very they are very very disciplined number one you know they would listen to you uh, with a lot of curiosity and uh, you know we you know a lot of us would believe that oh they are foreigners they wouldn't understand much but believe me they do uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, they do understand classical music to a great extent and i have uh, you know really enjoyed uh, performing in uh, america in the last couple of years uh you know given lecture demonstrations uh in in various universities i played at the smithsonian uh, museum uh in my tour in the year 2016 and uh you know beautiful auditoriums very very good audience and uh wow. especially i have also uh, you know enjoyed a lot of performing in europe because in europe uh you know uh, they really have a liking for bowed instruments like the instruments which are played with the bow like the violin viola cello and uh, you know yeah. sarangi being from the same family you kind of receive uh, you know a really high regard and a lot of love from from those folks so uh, so yes that's uh, my, and most of my international work i've been doing some recordings i've been doing my uh, solo concerts and uh, you know past 4 5 years uh, i've been lucky i've had good opportunities to travel abroad and do uh, some of the work that i like Wow! Wow! Sounds sounds like a dream of so many, Harsh. <laughs> and <Indeed>. uh, now <laughs> I'm gonna show a quick video. Um, you know, okay. But before before again, we we are also getting a lot of questions. Here is uh, uh, another question for me from Mr. Uh, Pr- from Pratha Thakur, uh, which is your favorite uh, classical instrument after, of course, after sarangi. is there anything uh yes of course and uh, if i answer this again i would be told that, that i'm biased but i love the sarod the instrument is my father <laughs> plays <laughs> but i also love the tabla uh, you know that's mm-hmm. one of my uh, favorite instruments and i enjoy listening to masters like ustad ahmed jan sir ko khas saab uh, you know habibuddin khan saab my grand uncle pandit chaturlal ji uh, you know who is responsible who took the tabla to the west in the mid 50s and uh, yeah, wow. we, you know uh, uh, he has had a tremendous contribution in introducing uh, tabla to uh, you know europe and america so you know i tremendously enjoy listening to him as well wow i again i have no words it's just uh, mesmerizing totally to keep hearing that you know everything is all in the family it's it's beautiful hush and uh, now let me let me finally show you guys the uh, Uh, what harsh and his thoughts of videos are elite different and so so amazing so i'm sure you guys are going to enjoy this again just give me another second
Okay, <laughs> I'm sure I I I'm sure the audience are going to agree that it was it. What was this, Harsh? Where were you? Like, <laughs> yeah, how was, was this uh, idea? It's fantastic. Was, uh, till date is one of my favorite uh, videos ever. This was one of uh, my US tours in 2015, and mm -hmm. uh, you know after one of my concerts in in uh, Phoenix, uh, you know my friend drove me to the Grand Canyon just. to have uh, you know just to relax for a bit and have a quiet night and uh, as soon as we reached there you know it was a beautiful view and because i had played the concert the previous day i had my instrument with me of course mm -hmm. so uh, you know and it was very impromptu i said okay you no know, let's let's do a little video let's see how it turns up and i sat there and my friend from a distance he was walking with my gopro towards me and i was getting the uh, the sound from my zoom recorder which you can see in the video and uh, we just happened to put that together i just sat there single take we were out of there in like 20 minutes and uh, it wow. turned out to be one of the best uh, videos uh, yeah i think it know. looks really grand it doesn't look as easy as you say <laughs> yes it was uh, you know uh, god has been kind you know he i think everything boils down to that and i must count my blessings <laughs> absolutely all right harsh you know so we are you know imagine we didn't even realize uh, time is like literally running and yep. uh, i i <laughs> i really wish we are going to see you soon uh, you know live someday uh, probably when every all of this is over but uh, of course uh, uh, you know coming to the whole covid situation which is still on and all of that digital concerts have really taken up uh, you know yes. so how how are you adjusting to that is that something you like or what's been the case well it's definitely uh, you know i don't think i could have ever imagined and i'm sure many of my musician brothers sisters wouldn't have imagined that you know this would be the situation and yeah. uh, you know one of the uh, biggest advantages is that we see so much of music that uh, you know happening in the online space so many more musicians are being able to showcase their talents uh, to the audience which is uh, you know in which is in a way such a blessing uh, you know however my heart will always lie with live concerts because uh, you know just being there on stage or even being in the audience and just experiencing a musician uh, you know express his or her craft uh, that is a different experience in all together uh you know however i must say that covid has definitely opened up a new platform and i'm sure moving ahead uh you know digital concerts is going to be uh uh, uh in, you know like the next thing a very important uh, medium that that's already come up so uh well you we just it's got to move to with time <laughs> yeah it's here to stay got to move yeah. with time right absolutely i think i think yes these live session irrespective has uh, done a lot of uh, difference to our life and we are so used to it now um, indeed but 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 of course like i said we all over here who are here listening to you talking with you uh, hope to have a live session soon as in a real live uh, <laughs> we shall do a uh, live now the meaning, of, the meaning of live has also changed <laughs> live is no more live <laughs> all right we will do a social media live soon yeah <laughs> yeah all right also uh, you know just covering this uh, because you know we talking about covid uh, have you i see a lot of artists taking uh, fitness very seriously and they have really dedicated extra time now and they're so conscious about it so yeah. uh, have you also done something on the fitness part <laughs> oh yes i i've been very big on fitness always uh, okay. you know all those time we are in right now covid times everyone has to stay fit we all know that by now but you know right from the beginning uh, i have been uh, uh, you know active i have been uh, regular with my workouts and uh, you know it would be hard for a lot of people to believe but i am a big fan of boxing i oh. i love boxing workouts uh, i know very unlike classical musicians yeah. uh, you know the the, the, the <laughs> hard it doesn't skipping, go with the image it doesn't go so the hard skipping <laughs> the hard running hitting the heavy bag uh, but uh, you know i've been i've been training uh, for for a very long time now 
but uh, wow. irrespective but whoever's out there please uh, be careful because these uh, <laughs> things are very injury prone all of us are musicians out there our hands are very important yeah. so uh, be careful yes. while you're doing a your workout and invest in yourself go to a good trainer <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a lovely uh, you know uh, thing to say also i'm going to conclude this right now uh, though i'm i'm sure all of us would just love to keep hearing but yes some other time soon but before we conclude uh, you know anything that you want to also let uh, i'm not going to say the young generation know but everybody because i think music is something anybody can do at any age all you need is that that dedication to do it so for anybody who ever wants to start up with Uh, an instrument or probably music overall is there anything right. that you want them to know oh, well uh, you know anyone who loves music and it's probably such a cliche now it's never too late for anything you know if yeah. you love something it's in it and it's not for everyone that everyone who picks up an instrument or wants to sing not necessarily wants to go on stage and uh, you know and and showcase their craft you can just learn for your own joy and for your own peace so you know and and it's never too late to uh, to begin that so uh, you know that's that would be my message to uh, you know our viewers today and viewers to come and uh, and uh, that's pretty much it okay all right great harsh uh, uh, would you like to quickly tell our audience about where can they find you on all the platforms with what name yes they can find me on facebook uh, uh, with harsh narayan my name and uh, i'm also available on instagram with the same name and uh, i have a website www.harshnarayan.com so uh, you can visit the website uh, drop me an email from there and uh, you know i'd be happy to respond <laughs> Great, great. I think so. Everybody now, y'all know where to go to find Hutch and listen to more of his music. So please do that. And uh, thank you so much, Hutch. This this was really lovely. You know, I'm I'm just bounded by time, I guess. But I think this was amazing. Way better than even you know I thought of. So I'm I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me uh, to the show. Thank you for inviting me uh, uh, and to the Catapult Network team. for having me on your show great harsh uh, and uh, you know for everybody here i'm not going to just conclude like this uh, i think i'm going to conclude the way we started uh, thanks to harsh because i don't think without these wonderful music videos we we would have you know we could complete the session in uh, such a wonderful manner so i think they have really added added a lot of colors to our live session today so i'm going to conclude with one last uh, a video of uh, harsh and uh, uh, you know this is this is a different video we, where he's also have uh, had somebody who's accompanied him his uh, friend colleague uh, called aditya dekale if if that's aditya the right dekale word on on tabla yes on tabla great so guys uh, thank you for joining us everybody um, i'm just saying all this now so that uh, you can now uh, you know concentrate on watching the video and uh, yeah good night and hope to see you guys soon um, and we are going to update you about our next uh, uh, next week and next guest and everything all right so be connected with us and thanks a lot for watching
Thank you.